Welcome to Moms Who Lead, where each week I talk to another mom who's balancing motherhood with a leadership role at work. Across industries, locations, and backgrounds, we're all facing the same challenges and opportunities. We talk about them here to help you balance your most important job with your career. So many of us have stories to share and advice to give. Be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And be sure to connect with me, Diana Mitchell, on LinkedIn. Now, on to the show. I am super excited to have Monica Evans here. Monica is a strategic marketing consultant who is a brilliant marketer, a phenomenal mom, and someone I'm really excited about wanting to have on the show. Hi, welcome. Hello, uh, nice to see you again. Yes, yes, from across the pond, Monica joins us. And uh, I feel like I wanted to say, did I say that properly? Like, I'm so American. Um, (laughs) Yeah, across the pond. (laughs) Across the yeah. pond, yeah. I studied and, English. Yeah, the border lit. of Wales and England, and so much so, it's so funny because we I went to go see a, a comedy show here, and one of the comedians was just like, "So, how many people are actually like from Wales here?" And all of the people were were that close to Wales, where it's just, "I'm from Wales." I can't even say England these days. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. So tell us a little about yourself. I know I gave you a little intro, but can you tell us about um, your your family and, and a little bit about you? Yeah, definitely. So I've been doing marketing for probably about 11 years now and always in the kind of inbound marketing space, very digital focused. And then just recently I started a family. I had um, a little boy back in June. And so he has definitely changed things quite a bit for me. (laughs) I know everyone always says that babies will change your life. And, you know, I get that. I just didn't realize how much. Um, So it it definitely, with balancing, I went back to work probably a month after Reese was born, and we have been doing this juggling between work and raising Reese and all this stuff. So I felt that as quite um, a challenge. I was like, they always said, newborns, they sleep forever. Um, You can get a a lot of work done, but that's not not true. Because then, you know, I've got a dog as well who needs to be walked, (laughs) and like, there's just so many things. (laughs) It's amazing, though, pet ownership or pet um, parent parenthood does in a way prepare you for kids. I'm not trying to like say my yeah. child is like an animal, but it does. <laughs> I know. I you're I mean now I devote all my time to Reese where I look at like my my dog who's like basically the size of a human. Yeah. And I'm just like, I feel I just feel so bad. I need to get you out of the house. And it's just there's not enough hours in the day. I can just tell you that. <laughs> yeah, but no like dealing with like poop and puke and like all that stuff, like you got I know. down. And then the poop outside too. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and you know, on your point about when people tell you, oh, they sleep all, no, it's not. It's like a constant rotation of like sleep, diaper, food, play, sleep, di- like yeah. it, is, it is intense. So there's no, it's not like you're sitting around on a laptop while the baby's sleeping yeah. really the whole day. And, I thought that to be, too. To be honest, I don't work well with routine. I've noticed this about um. myself. I was very, very much of a free spirit in my 20s, traveled the world, worked where I traveled because I've just always been that digital focus that having a child now is that like my day revolves around wake up, feed, play, sleep and repeat, you know, and that's just, I'm, I'm, I'm not used to it and I'm still trying to get used to it. And I just feel like the days go by so much quicker with that routine in place. Yes, that's very true. And I think, and, and one of the reasons I was especially excited to talk to you today is that the perspective is really different when you're not working in a traditional nine to five uh, versus yeah. when you're self-employed and working with your employers or clients or organizations. And I know you work very closely with an agency as well as with your own direct clients, but that's a really different way to do it. Did you ever work in yeah. a traditional nine to five or have you always been consulting? So I did. I dabbled in the f- traditional nine to five in an office, but I've just, like I mentioned, too much of a free spirit to be, you know, I, when I lived in Austin, I worked for this, um, this AI company and was very much nine to five in the office. Um, but then that, that kind of moved to more of a, of a digital kind of remote space as well. And I think with COVID nowadays, I just think people have realized that office businesses don't need to have a 
a storefront or a business office, you know, because you can do everything remote now. We're moving into this such digital world that it's like people could work anywhere. And personally, I feel like I get more done in the day when I work from home. I'm a huge multitasker. So if I put in a load of laundry, do an hour bit of work, feed Reese, you know, like all this stuff, like you are just more productive in life. I feel like when you're working from home and managing that. Without a doubt, like, and I now see, I'm working home for t- literally 10 years, but when people are talking about the struggles, like I get the struggle, but for me, it was like, I can bang out my whole life like and, and get yeah. more work done. The realities of working in an office with the constant chatter at cubicles and like the long lunches and just like wasted time. Like I work more intensely, more quickly, and then I have better balance. Like I, to me, it's a no brainer. And I get not every, we're a lot of like, and not, not every personality yeah. is going to thrive in that, but I agree. Like for you, and then and I'm bringing Annie Reese to the equation. Like that's so interesting to me. And and can you? Did you plan out what you thought it was going to be like, or like you said, did you just just kind of figure, I'll go with the flow with this, and it'll work out. Yeah, I think the thing as a consultant, right? You don't really get vacation time. I don't get, you know, it's you you balance these, you know, benefits on, you know, the the freedom of when you want to work and how you want to work. However, you don't get the paid time off or the maternity leave and stuff. So I always had planned after having Reese that I was going to go back to work relatively quickly. Um, it's very different here in the UK because in the UK, everyone gets nine months plus. Uh, they can extend it to a year of maternity leave. So that was quite shocking for a lot of people here in the UK because yeah. they're just like, well, like, why are you going to back, back to work so soon? But for me personally, like, I love my time with Reese. I do love it. However, I'm still Monica. Like, I'm still who I am. And I didn't want to lose that either and be too far out of the game. And that, I guess that's kind of what comes with, like, being a woman is that the, the woman typically has to give up their career because they are going to raise the children. But that's never really been my mentality. I've always wanted to continue to work, but also have a family. Um, So that was always the plan after Reese was born that I was going to go back to work um, relatively quickly, take it part time to start and then work it back up. But but I didn't want to lose my clients. I didn't want to lose the business for when I am ready to go back um, full time or, you know, I just I, I needed that safety net knowing that I would still have them after. Yeah, my that's a good better. point. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of safety nets, I mean, it does take a village, right? And you're in the UK, but your family's not. So no. can you talk a little bit about your support system and who's kind of like helped you to to get it all? I mean, we can do it all. I know that you can do it all, but yeah. it helps when you have some support. Yeah. And that kind of came to light too. So when I when I first was pregnant, I, um, I was in the UK. And so I joined, even though COVID... So lockdown was like real in England, like no one could leave anything like that. And then things started opening up and um, I took these like prenatal classes and I met these group of girls. Um, To be fair, like, I don't think I would have put them as like my, like they would be best friends in the future and stuff. However, like I, I don't have anybody here in the UK. Um, I don't have my family. Like I, my mother-in-law has just moved here, but I, I don't, I didn't have my parents. I don't have my brothers or sister or my sister. Like I just, I did, I just didn't have anybody. And, um, so I would rely on a lot of conversations with my mom throughout the day. Cause like it'd be the evening time and morning time. Cause my family's all out on the Pacific coast. And so, but it came to light that people are willing to step up when somebody needs it. Like, and this kind of gave me like a warm feeling of just like moms, we get it. Like we, we feel each other. I had the worst migraine of my life one day, like uh, almost to the point where I was just like, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't, I had to cancel my meetings. Reese was being one of those days where it's just like, he knew I was in a a bad way. So let me be the worst baby imaginable Mm. that day. And I just, I sat there crying being like, I don't know what to do. Cause my my husband's job can't really, um, it's not like he has the flexibility to like come home and stuff like that it just doesn't allow for that. And, um, so I reached out to these group of girls and one of them took Reese for the entire day and let me sleep. And I just, I could not eat. Cause she had a 
big a baby in and around the time I did. So not only was she watching her own child, she was also watching my child. And I just still to this day, like I, I'm still blown away that somebody who I'd just known for six months would be there for me. And I think that's just that bond that like mothers bring to each other and stuff. And it, it's just that that's just kind of been my support is these people that have met. That is amazing. Like, wow. And, and especially because there are, everybody has those moments where it's like, I don't know what to do, but yeah. I can, I can imagine, or I, I just, I can't imagine how challenging that would be to like, feel like you're on an Island and like, yeah. what the heck do I do? Cause it's hard enough. Like uh, when someone's right down the street, but when, when you're kind of isolated out there, that's really rough. And yeah, yeah, you, most days though, you're getting it done, which is really awesome yeah. and impressive. And my husband has been so great about it because we have this night feed. And so, you know, he will rush home after work and, you know, take over, you know, the duties and like get him bathed and all the stuff ready for bath. And that, that's been a tremendous help. Like it is, it, it was it was rough because, you know, Shane had, you know, seven weeks off um, when we first had the newborn. And so I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. Like once like I've got this whole thing worked out. Um, but no, it was it's I mean, still to this day, it's extremely challenging. So yeah. do you talk to your clients about um, like, do, does it somehow, does being a mom or does Reese somehow work its way into those conversations? Like, is it a natural thing? I think there's a, a couple different, like, um, paths on this. Like some people, like when they're on with work, they like are completely on and they don't talk about it, but does it, does motherhood work its way into your, your conversations? I think so. I think there's a time and place for it for me. Um, but I'm always transparent. Like if I'm, if it's the day where it's just like, I, I, I won't be able to get to things because Reese is just, is unwell and we need to do this. And so I think the thing is, and I feel like most clients know, I think we, we've, we've kind of, kind of did some steps forward where it's like, we know that there are way more working moms now. It's not the stay-at-home mom. So they get it. Reese has been on meetings with me um, because it's the only way that I can have these meetings. Um, and some of my clients have even sent gifts for Reese. So they, I think they've been like very supportive. I think that it's, it's the type of thing where I think if you're honest about it and you're transparent, I think people are more willing to help out or be understand your situation a little bit more yeah I think some people sadly still are afraid like it's yeah. going to somehow be seen as a weakness and, and exactly. to me it's like yeah. well do I if a company is going to view that as a weakness I they're probably not a company I want to work with anyway exactly yeah so uh, and luckily like I out of the clients I've had like they they haven't been like oh well we don't want to work with you but you yeah. can tell it's the type of thing when I first was going to go on maternity because I had Reese three weeks early so what my deadline was in terms of when I'd be like transitioning over to the person who's going to like cover me um it kind of like sped up because it was just like, well, I'm going into the hospital this weekend. <laughs> so I think there's always a thing of like, well, well, what does this mean for my work? Instead of like the first bit, like, well, how are you doing? Right? Like it's, what is this going to, what is, how is this going to impact me? Which I get your business is sure, super, yeah. you know, important to you. Um, but I think with, I think people don't realize that you can be pregnant, you can have a kid and still get the work done and still make sure that if you're not going to be there, there'll be somebody else to pick it up. Yeah, it's funny how that is. Like, And I think this is just a manifestation in general. And for whatever reason, I feel like this is more prevalent in marketers. Like we're so anxious about what could go wrong. We worry, worry, yeah. worry, 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 instead of like realizing that things are going to go right. And yeah. especially when you're working with someone who's really smart like you, like, you know, that you had everything, you had all your ducks in a row. So even if there's a difference in the time schedule or, or whatever, like it's going to work itself out. And I think yeah. sometimes people get so nervous about what could be that they aren't like taking in what is. Yeah. Exactly. And like, that's the thing about us too, is that we have like, if we have a plan A, that is, we've already have a plan B and C ready to go just in case plan, plan A didn't work. <laughs> and I think too, that consultants are more adept at this. Like you have to think that through to, to your point earlier, like 
we don't get vacations. <clears throat> you do more work the week before and the week after. And if you go somewhere for a week, like, but the work still is on you and you figure it out. Um, but like in a, in a corporate structure, it, so, so like, it's just a given like, yeah, I've got this, I've got a whole plan, but in the corporate structure, it's like, oh shoot, this is throwing off everything. What's going to happen because they don't have to constantly plan around things. Like yeah. if you're consulting, you have to balance, you have to plan around that. But uh, it's more rigid and, and, and structured in that traditional nine to five so that the client sometimes can't understand that the consultant has it covered. Yeah, for, exactly. For a worry. That's funny. Also, I feel like consultants are so like, like disposable, right? So of course, consultants are going to be more on top of it because it's easier to get rid of us, you know, but we have to show more value than somebody that's in a corporate world. That's a good point. Um, and, and actually, too, I was, I'm still thinking about the fact that I, um, I, you should have brought Reese on this call, but that's okay. About how our kids do make appearances. Like it just happens. I love to tell the story about how my daughter once, um, my husband was outside there and she opened the door. She, it was a really easy handle and she refused to wear clothes that day. Um, except for this like velour red um, long sweater that looked like a robe that came from this um, service stitch fix or whatever. Yeah, it wasn't, a good, I, it wasn't a good pick, but she loved it. So she walked in naked with this velour robe over. She did have a diaper on and she looked like a little Hugh Hefner and she just like <laughs> peeked her head in and there's four people there and they were all laughing and I was just like, oh God, what are you going to do? And, uh, and I thought at first I was like, oh, and then I'm like, whatever, my kids are really yeah. funny and cute. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? And, and, and I, I stand by this, that an animal or a child, like who's really going to complain about that? Exactly. And if they yeah. do, then you must hate babies and animals. So. And joy and <laughs> happiness and lollipops and cupcakes, like yeah, find exactly. something to, like really. Yeah. Anyway. Um, now, I, I keep coming back to this, but I'm just like really blown away by someone balancing a newborn and being um, a business owner and a resource and, and doing all this. Like you're the leader, you're the doer, you're the mom. And it's just, it's a lot of balls up in the air. Is there a piece of advice or is there a mentor or someone who you've been able to kind of go to and like roll things by, or even just like vent that's helped you? Yeah. Um, I do talk a lot of um, talk to a lot of friends who are moms. Um, I think even new ones, like new friends that I have, and old friends, and I think that that's been the kind of thing because, like, I just went to Newcastle last week to visit a friend who just had two kids, and she's now working. She was a teacher. She's kind of switched gears and now has gotten into the marketing side of things as well. So I've been chatting with her, like, how do you balance kind of your day? Um, because that's the other thing too is like babies are all different, right? Like the way that my baby sleeps and feeds and all stuff could be completely different than your schedule and everything like that. So there's never like a direct way, like a, a, the same way each way. Like if I'm chatting to my girlfriends and stuff. So, but it's nice to vent and it's nice to um, be able to have that as like kind of like a safety net to be like, I just need to vent. I just need to talk to somebody. And I have that there. And I do, I'm very close with my mom. I'm very close with my dad. So I do talk to them on a daily basis and they've been there to like really help me through things. I mean, they, they raised me, right. You know, yeah, like my yeah. baby should be somewhat close to me. So they should give me some advice back to me. Um, and my parents, like I have six nieces and nephews, all that stuff. So like my parents are like the, they babysit, they, they, they know they've seen it all. So it's, those have been kind of the, the people that I've, I've really looked to, to, to kind of help with that situation. That's nice. And I think parents have, some parents have a really good ability to feel out when they say, should be able to say, you should do this versus have you tried this or this really worked for me? Like sometimes it's the approach that makes all the difference between someone saying you're doing it wrong, do this versus when your niece was this age, I tried this. Have you tried that? Like, yeah, it's all about the delivery there. Yeah, exactly. Like, don't tell me how to raise my child, but then give me advice. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I know, but tell me what to do anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, was there a piece of advice or a situation that like stands out to you that's like kind of like your golden rule, or is it more like as like the type of thing? Because for me personally, like I, 
I, I'm the type of person where if like an email comes in, like, let me just get to this right away. Because if I don't get to it right away, I feel like I'm going to forget about it. Yes. But I think kind of the best advice is I like, it will get done, right? Reese will have to go to bed at some point, right? Like he's not going to be awake for 24 hours and like, I can't do anything, but it will get done. So don't do it right then and there to stress yourself out even more that if he's not going down for his nap when he should be going and I'm like reading these emails while I'm like, you know, like trying to like rock him to sleep, like you're only stressing yourself out more. So focus on what's there and then worry about the rest after. I like that a lot. It will get done. Like, yeah. I, I really like that. It's a good reminder because um, I think too, and it, maybe this is a, a, a consultant thing or a marketer thing. We convince ourselves that the client expects something right this second when yeah. in reality, it, even if they take hours or even days to get back to us, we've got to get back to them right now. Yeah, and exactly. Then, like, oh, they emailed me five minutes ago. I must get them yeah. back like, like a second later. <laughs> oh, it's so true. It is so true. That's great. Is there a piece of advice that you would give to a um, maybe somebody who's transitioning from the corporate world to the consulting world and they have kids, just something to um, about navigating that change? Because I think it can be very jarring. And, and as someone who's been on both sides of it, and so have I, I think I take this for granted. And I, it just seems so natural and seamless to go between corporate and consulting. But uh, more and more people are looking at this as a viable career option and not a temporary stop. And uh, But I think that there's a lot of hesitation and fear. And I get a lot of feedback like this behind the scenes on LinkedIn too when we share these episodes. But any kind of advice you'd give someone who wants to make that leap? Yeah, I think the thing is, is people are so afraid to leave that corporate world because again, it's a safety net, right? But you don't have the freedom that you do working from home as a consultant and, you know, and having the, your schedule the way you want it to. So then you get more time with your children. It's those type of things where it's like, if you're in an office nine to five, nine to six, some days, and maybe even seven, it pushes you because you have to like get it. You can still throughout the day, see your kids in and out. You can have a nanny at home. Like my mother-in-law has moved here to help um, with um, Reese and being able to work and also be there. But I get to go at lunch and hang out with Reese. I get to like in between meetings or like when I need to take a break and walk around and stuff like that, I get to go play with him. So that's the kind of exciting thing about that transition. And yes, like it, you don't have that safety net and stuff, but what you do get instead of that safety net is more time with your family, more flexibility in terms of when you want to work and how you want to work. And then you just, you, you have the ability to choose who you want to work with, right? Like you can leave clients, you could take clients, like you have that ability. And I think that that is, that outweighs anything you would get from a corporate side. I love that you mentioned that so much. Like, um, <laughs> this is so me, isn't this? this is very TMI, but like every time I like go to the bathroom, it means that my daughter has to like grab my hand and show me this mini mouse thing or whatever. Yeah. And those are like literally the joys that you get you through the day. It's those little yeah. moments and being able to have lunch, like you said, and when she goes to school, I'm going to miss that terribly. <laughs> I know. And then it's also like, if they walk or crawl for the first time you're there, you get to see it. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's just like, you, you miss those things. I think you're in a corporate world. You're, you're away too much during the day. I think for me, it still gives me that ability to like peek in and give Reese a kiss or, you know, get to hold him when he wakes up from a nap or, you know, like even if it's a short period of time, but I, I'm still present in his life throughout the day. And to be clear, we're not criticizing anyone. We're not saying yeah, everyone no, 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 should ever no. work a nine to five just again. If somebody is yeah. looking to yeah. kind of move toward. Yeah. I mean, my friend Mandy, like she, she is one hell of a woman, and she's a career woman and all stuff like that. She will, she when she starts having kids, she will only be in the office. And more power to you. Like if yeah. you work better away from home, but I'm just saying, yeah. if you really do want to make the jump and stuff, there are. Yeah added values to being able to be at home. Exactly. Yeah. And if that's something you miss, I mean, and there are 
unfortunately, not as many as there should be organizations that are very supportive of you taking the time away and being yeah. at and things they do without have hassle. Some flexibility hours yeah. now too, like if you need to take your child to school or nursery yeah. in the morning and that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but it is nice to have <clears throat> the freedom to do that on your own and to make those choices yeah. and not have to clear it or let people know. And it, and, uh, it is really nice and it's totally a perk. It's those little moments I gave you. I, I used to like when, when, uh, my daughter was little, I would add up the time in my head, like how much time do I have with her? every day and literally it's a little moments during the day it almost like doubles my time because I'm waking yeah. up in the morning and then she's going to bed at whatever at the time like 7 30 and it's like oh this is so great because it's like a, that Seinfeld thing with um Stella you're welcome where it's like after meals and sleep and showers it's really only like 15 minutes yeah. sometimes it feels like that as yeah. I'm like, like well like, like that's what I'm saying like my times go by faster now because yes. I'm so like rigid on that routine where I'm just like where is the day gone like I think I've only spent time with you for like 15 minutes to anyone who actually got that reference um for Seinfeld um uh congratulations because that's a pretty random one um yeah, no, my dad was a huge, uh, growing, uh, I got used to only watch Seinfeld because w- even during Christmas time, we gave him like when DVDs were still a thing, right? Like the <laughs> entire like series of Seinfeld every season yes. imaginable. That's the Stella one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, done. Uh, well, that's great stuff. Now, are you accepting new clients? Do you have any bandwidth? Okay. Who, who, what kind of uh, industries or verticals? What, what's your ideal client look like for anybody who's interested? So in your I really like working in the um, kind of tech space. Um, I think that there is true kind of growth in that you, in in all like stages of your business too, right? Like if you're just starting out, you just have a new product, a new solution, and you want to get your kind of product out there. You've been very engineer focused and so, like, but you haven't really focused on the marketing side of things like that. I love that. That's kind of a great figuring out who your buyer personas are, figuring out how you want to talk to them. Um, I think is, I, I love that. But then also beyond that, like a, a, like an, a, an established company that just needs to be able to like excel their marketing efforts, right? Like they need to like, let's do some great campaigns each month. Let's kind of track those campaigns, see how that's going to generate some new leads for us. So, so I do like that. However, I do work in all spaces, but I typically do like to work B2B. Yeah. And good call on that. I mean, how many businesses, you know, they max out marketing by hiring a really great leader, but there's no purple squirrels that can't do it all. Yeah. And that's the thing, like you, you have a team and stuff, but I think that's another thing with companies these days is that they're so involved in their day to day. Like they, they just, every single day they think about that company they think about that company like, and then they just get burnt, right? They need an outside source to kind of come in and be like, all right, you've been doing the same thing. So you've hit a plateau. What do we need to do now to kind of get past that plateau, right? Like, because, because I think that that does happen with a lot of companies is like, not saying that your, your marketing people are not great. They are probably fantastic. It's just that it's been so ingrained in them of like, this has worked, this has worked, this has worked, and we know it works and all this stuff. But then you just hit a plateau and you're like, well, what do we do? And that's kind of where the nice thing about an outside person comes in. They see things differently because they haven't been in it for so long. So, and I, I do like that. Good point. And how can someone reach you if they want to connect? Yeah, LinkedIn is great. Um, and then also my my email, m.evans1028 at gmail.com. I mean, I've had that forever. It's probably time that I get more, a little bit more professional email, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> I had my first Gmail by invite, like when you had to get an invite to get it. Oh yeah. See, they, I had a Hotmail one, which was actually more professional than this one. I was like monica.evans1 at hotmail.com. But like, and then I just, I can't even access that anymore. <laughs> and you know, we'll, we'll put that in the show notes as well. So reach out to Monica if you need help. And Monica, thank you so much. I appreciate your candor and, and your perspective. And uh, I'm I'm amazed and impressed by all that you're able to do. And, uh, and congratulations. And uh, thank thanks you. for being on. That was good stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, take care. Bye. Thanks for sitting in with us this week. My hope is that you feel supported, understood, and heard. I appreciate that you took the time to be here. Let me send a quick shout out to our subscribers who join me here every week. I am so honored. And if you haven't already, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn. My URL is linkedin.com slash in slash Diana Mitchell 716. Take care out there, everyone.